This was my first sale in nearly six months because I've been enjoying land life in the Dominican Republic throughout hurricane season. But now I needed to prepare for my next major sailing adventure, 100 days completely off grid. In this water world challenge, Nicole and myself will each solo our own boats away from here and into the tropical paradise that is the Bahamas. So this is known as a shakedown sail, where I check and see what works and what doesn't. Because after six months of my boat sitting comfy on a mooring and not moving, you can pretty much guarantee something has deteriorated and is going to break. And sure enough, it did. But I'd rather find out here and now while I have the available resources to fix it than later when I'm far off grid and isolated from supply chains. So if you're new to sailing or looking to learn, this is a great video full of important lessons. Why? Because I made tons of simple mistakes and show how to correct them. All this effort so I can get back to this. All right, let's dive on in. Today is the day I am doing a shakedown sail. Gonna see how the boat's gonna operate after, oh man, it has to have been four or five months, maybe even six months. I don't even know. It's been way too long since I've sailed my beautiful boat. But today is a shakedown sail. We're gonna get out there just before this wind turns on. And I mean, literally just a second ago, this breeze just started hitting coming up out of the east. And it's gonna clock up to 20 knots today. So I wanna get out there while it's nice and calm. Everything's easy, figure things out, get upwind, and then when it hits 20 knots, sail downwind. Let's get on it. We got Nicole here helping out today, and we got a cute little Kaijin, cutest little pupper with his little, <laughs> look at this, look at this. He's so light and so pupper. <laughs> So we just finished getting some gasoline for the dinghy just in case I need a secondary motor um, and opening everything back up. Really, I've actually kept this boat pretty well able to sail. It only took me maybe 30 minutes to properly put everything away. This boat could sail at the drop of a hat, which is cool. This part was kind of annoying though, is getting these lines ready so when I come back, I can easily get back onto my mooring. Now right now the wind is already on and this right here is a beautiful sailing breeze, but we know it's gonna kick to 20, so we wanna get going. Right now what I have is my third line that I might be able to pick up with a boat hook. The secondary mooring, main mooring line, I'm probably gonna just leave on the paddleboard when I come back and hopefully be able to grab this one when we come back. Let's raise up the dinghy. Now let's start the motor on up. Just gonna be a press. Sometimes it is a beep. Sometimes it is for a minute, then I'll stop. If anybody knows why it does that in the most irregular way, I would love to know. All right, so we've got VHF on, we've got depth sounder, we have autopilot on. We are checking the helm to make sure we can feel our steerage. Steerage feels nice and good. We have no lines in the water, although this one's a little close for the fun of it. And I can also take these lines and run them across so we feel extra safe, but I'm not too worried about it. Halyard line is up and over there. We have spare jib halyard is uh, back already. Jib is ready to deploy, main is ready to deploy. We probably do want to center the main, but we can wait a minute for that. Um, we've got enough coolant, which does still leak on my boat. I'll deal with that one day. Um, we've got the pupper, we've got the Nicole. What do you think, Nicole? Is there anything else I've forgotten that we need to double check? We've got the mooring lines ready to go. I think we're ready to do this. Um, before we go anywhere, we check the motor to make sure that we have positive propulsion. Um, like I said, unfortunately the wind has picked up a lot more than I wanted to just to start out with, um, but it's just gonna be what it's gonna be. So we'll first uh, do a little bit of propulsion. Felt pretty good to me. All right, let's get ready to set sail. Right, what a beautiful day to set sail. So I've got my paddleboard holding two of the lines on there. And this one, which is ready to go, will deploy with the bumper there. And that's what we'll try to pick up on our way back in. Um, only other thing I can think of here is when we go to get off the mooring ball, 
We want to try to do it when we're pointing probably that way because there is a sandbar over there and I don't want to have to try to cut this. I want to go out over here. So it's going to be Nicole's job to not only get us off the mooring, maybe try to chuck it over, but also let me know if I'm near any lines in the water. We don't want to foul the prop. It looks like we're getting ready here as the boat turns. This is the big moment, folks. Prepare to take it off. Six months. Put the helm over. Cast it off. Cast off. There's the line in the water. The one thing that I do want to watch for. So one thing I am super nervous about is my propeller is super old. I mean, any minute now, it could go. So a little scared about that, but look at the boat moving along like always. Feeling pretty good. I love this cockpit because it keeps me nice and protected, but I don't like the reduction in visibility. On a Coles boat, I can see everything. Here, visibility is a little bit more obscured, but thankfully, I know the area. And of course, your, your wonderful first mate here giving you a, a, uh, a stress-reducing shoulder rub. More for my sake than his. Oh, why are you stressed? <laughs> because you're stressed. Oh, am I not no, stressed? No, I'm saying I'm giving you a massage, so I'm not stressed that you're stressed. Oh, that's, that's complicated. Yeah. So it is good that I do know this area pretty well as far as where everything is, but I'm still going to boot up Navionics just to be sure. There's a massive catamaran that comes through here, like right through here is its channel. So knowing that it can uh, make that is really good and knowing that I'm not going to hit anything. Talk to it. Okay. Oh, it's on right now. Kaijin! Yeah, Kaijin up here in his new life jacket. Thanks to one of my patrons. Say hi, Kaijin! He's the perfect boat dog. But yeah, we're leaving Luperon Harbor right now. Lots of boats in the morning, but we're in the deep part of the channel that kind of goes along the mangroves and then goes to the right up here. excited to go sailing on Daniel's boat. This is the first time and in my mind it's like he came here six months ago, his boat seemed to be fine and he seems a little stressed to go sailing right now which I get it, I was stressed on my boat but I think it's gonna be fine. The only thing I'm kind of worried about is this prop breaking. I was about to suggest maybe getting a tow line ready in case this prop did break but I think, I think he's got it under control. We've got a local rowing. It's funny though because when I do see people going by and they see me and I wave, I feel this tinge of like irritation because I have my own boat. <laughs> oh, and we got Rian out there. Oh, yeah. He's going to be making his way. I feel like he set sail a long time ago though. Yeah, like 20 minutes. Yeah, still, I thought he'd be further. He's attacking her. What's he doing? Yeah. Oh, we're going to find out with my boat here. We got two boats anchored out here and pretty soon I'm going to be doing that as well. Uh, might as well do that actually like the last several days that I'm here just to remember why I'm here, remember what I'm doing and uh, get used to it. Nicole is going to take the helm while I check out the engine. Remember folks my coolant leaks sometimes so I got to make sure I'm not losing coolant and double check my, uh, my engine temperature doesn't go beyond that 200 mark. Now that's temperature I think is running a little bit hotter than it actually is in real life but still. Doggo. All right, we're looking good here. Let's take a look up on the bow. Feels good to be back out. Can't believe I haven't taken the boat out, and I think it's I think it's five months. That's wild, just absolutely wild. Out 
this is what's so obnoxious and so stressful out here is we can hit any one of these. They, they put these out here everywhere with complete disregard for larger vessels. Because the only larger vessels are us sailboats. If we hit these, it stops our propeller and we go into the rocks over there, which is directly downwind, if we can't get a sail up and beat this. Got them over here, got them over there. I mean, I would say that like, it feels like there's only like a 50 foot gap that's like almost definitely gonna be good. Getting past this, I'm gonna be able to relax, especially once I get my sails up. If I get my sails up, it doesn't matter if I grab one of these, I'm gonna just yank it anyway. And it could potentially even bend my propeller, so really scary, really obnoxious. I really wish they were better about uh, not putting these here. And it's, it's tough too because it goes so deep so quick, but they're still seeming to put them out here, even if it's several hundred feet deep. So really unfortunate, but hopefully soon in a moment, we're gonna put the sail up and be able to point up into the wind. Got some good wind though. Travel up the side of the main. Well, we definitely got enough wind. I thought I had a refit for a second. I might have a refit. Oh, that's okay, clear it out. up there because it doesn't really clip it in. It's just against it a little bit of a design flaw it's just a bare hook. If you don't put like a piece of string there, it just won't hold it. So now let's do some sailing. All right, show me the jib. Get some wind on that. It's not like that, that much wind. I kind of just want to go full jib. Yeah. But we'll start out with less. You can always put more on. That wasn't so hard. Getting a good lean on here. My outhaul is doing some creaking, but that's okay. Not the end of the world at all. Now let's give the motor a little shut off. Let's actually do some sailing. It does indeed. An excellent idea. really comfortable it's blowing like 15 to 20 and we're going up wind and she's tracking well and it's not uncomfortable in any way like she's going six knots so couldn't ask for anything better bring the jib in please i want to go upwind 
So now that we've heard Nicole's assessment of my boat, uh, I'm gonna give you guys mine real quick. And that's just that it feels really good to be back out sailing, I gotta say. Uh, I try to be honest with you guys and tell you that I don't consider myself much of a sailor. I do a fair bit of it, obviously, um, but I look at a sailboat as my home, not so much as a boat, funny enough. Um, but to be able to just pop out here, do, uh, what is that, about six knots average into the wind, I'm very happy with that. Catching some waves here. And I feel like the wind's died just a little bit. I feel like now we're down to like 12 to 18 maybe knots. Um, but on the upside, we're catching up to that boat there. There they are up there. We're going to catch them. All right, looks like they're tacking. Looks like they're tacking. They didn't want to get caught. They're tacking. We're catching them because the main axe has more of a stabilizer tail, which is why if you have more sail up, you're gonna lean or over, but the jib is more like a gas pedal. So the fact that their jib is reefed, you know. Oh, look at that! We're past this bow, we're beating him! Older boat, smaller boat. Oh baby, we're doing it, we're doing it. I don't like to race my boat. Unless I know I'm winning. I'm a terrible sport. Because I don't consider my boat to be quick, you know? But uh, yeah, I just think, I think if he put a reef in his vein and had his, uh, his jib reef, I think he'd be doing much better. Hey, Mabru, Mabru! I'm doing good! How are you with the full vein? Oh, I gotcha, okay. Well, like I said, this is our first sail in, in too long, so I'm, I've been using you as, uh, as a bit of racing spirit without you knowing it. <laughs> You're a good sport. actually gone pretty far upwind here. Take a look. I mean, all the way over there, it's that point there is where we could go to. That is darn near. That's got to be what? That's not quite 90 degrees. That's got to be what? 60 degrees we could go down? 60 degrees of upwind we've got right now. I think I like the sound of that. 
I don't want to go too much downwind today directly. I'd rather enjoy it going at like a broad reach. So we don't need to catch them. I feel like we've already won. Even though they tacked just when we did. They look healed over. I guess so are we though. So instead what I think I'd like to do is begin to bear down and we're gonna see what kind of speed we can get this boat on. How does that sound? Good. Sound good? All right. All right. Begin to bear down a bit. So what I'm gonna do is slap the main. Bear down into that. Let's just see what kind of speeds we can pick up here. That does feel nice and quick. I guess we're doing at least seven, maybe eight. Let's see, we got six on the board. We got seven on the board. All right, now let's try adjusting the sails a little bit. Bear down a little bit. Okay. You're at 210, a little bit more, 217. Let's kick that stick, uh, 220, 210 to 220. Okay. All right, so that's our new heading. Now let's let the jib out a little bit. You know what else I'm really keen to do? Let's let the jib out a little bit. Got a nice control on it. And we are at full jib. Wow, that feels like a lot more power. Feel that? How does the helm feel? We're not quite balanced out yet for our point of sail, so. It is to be worth All right, great. Let's take a look first. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's get a little more twist in that bad boy. Let's see here, I'm gonna release the main sheet. Helmsman, how is that? Much better. Much better. If you got the main on too much, it puts too much power right in the stick of the mast, and it makes the helm very squirrely. Oh, feels pretty good. All right, so we got both sails ripping along here. Now this is the point of sail and the speed of sail that I want to do for the rest of my life. I don't want to do what we just did a minute ago. I want to do this because this is what, like eight knots, seven knots at least. Look at that. Look at all that back there. You know what? Let's take a closer look at that. I think we all know what I mean by that. You gotta understand, folks, I didn't build a swim platform on the back of my boat just for the fun of it. I built a swim platform on the back of my boat so I could do shenanigans like this. Where, let's see, are we? Oh, we're almost outrunning the waves here. And this is where trust comes in. I'm about to trust Nicole with my life. With my life, Nicole. Anxiety? Oh, it really okay. It's a little seasicky down there. All right, now that I got a new battery in the GoPro, we're coming back on in here. We still gotta watch out for crab pots, but I've made an executive 
captainly decision. Isn't that right, Nicole? Look how angry she is. I'm not angry. She, she's all jealous. I have a headache. She's jealous because I'm going to anchor out. I decided. I am jealous of that. Oh, what, what's that? I am jealous of that. Oh, I'm my own boat out. oh she's a little jelly. So I'm going to be anchoring out. Um, I'm doing this mostly out of laziness. I don't want to go back onto my mooring in like 20 knots of wind. It's kind of a pain in the butt. I'd rather do it in the morning when there's zero wind, which there's tons of zero wind days. So I'm also deciding that I'm going to try to sail onto the anchor, which I love doing and haven't been able to do it in a while. And this just all goes into my ethos of not using my motor. I just like to do that. Cool. Let's take a look. We can actually see the bottom right now. So we are pretty darn shallow and we really want to make sure we're not going to hit a crab pot or a lobster trap or whatever it is they deem so necessary they have to put it in the middle of the darn channel. I don't see any. I feel like there were so many more when we were coming out. Maybe they them all up. Maybe, maybe. Um, yeah, so we're gonna keep going on into here and then I think inside there we're gonna pull in the jib uh, once we can shadow it a bit more. Because the jib is a bit of a pain, yeah. We're gonna try to go upwind into that spot there and then in our downwind we're gonna try to pull it in. Let's get it done. We just caught a heck of a gush. We're doing seven knots right now. And here comes the channel marker. Let's see how close to the channel marker we can get. Pull up on the port side. Okay, don't hit it. All righty then. Ready to be strong. All right, what do you want me to do? You're going to be pulling this in. Let the, let the, um, let the main out. Put it out like three feet. Pull me one. Keep going, go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. All right, clean it off. All right. Now I need you to be strong. Start pulling that in. Oh, oh. Going? Oh. You're almost there. There you go, clean that off. So now we're sailing on in here. What we're going to do is we're going to sail in, probably go behind that boat, but we might go in front of them. And we're just going to try to anchor right between these two boats here, equal distance, giving them plenty of space. We're going to do that with the main up, and then I'm going to run up. Might as well do it now and prep the anchor to be dropped. Anchor's ready to go. Bring in the main sheet all the way, as tight as you can get it. Really about to hope the charts are right now. All right, looks like we're sort of on a broad reach, very slowly right here. And we've got the space better to go in front of them, but a ways in front of them. Yeah, two knots, I like this, because it's all the time in the world. Maybe let it back out. <laughs> Preemptively put it in neutral in case I need to turn it on. I really don't want to. But I also really don't want to hit their anchor line. All right, we've got 1.3 knots, 1.4. Yeah, I think we're gonna make it. Basically, we don't want to hit their anchor chain as we come very slowly past. Oh, 1.5, we're speeding up a little. Kind of committed now. Definitely gonna feel a lot better in a second once we get past it. And then the wind picks up. All right, now we're doing one seven. I don't want to jinx us, but I think if we were gonna hit, we would have just hit. Oh no, now the rudder has to get past. If the rudder isn't gonna make it. Oh my God, we made it. <laughs> that did get a little closer than I wanted. Not ideal. Okay, now we focus on anchoring. We can see up there, pull, pull in the main all the way. Yeah, that sail drift really got me there for a second. We do want to go upwind a bit. Now the cool thing about having just the main up and it being centered and tightened is um, we can just tack all we want left and right, left and right. So we're going to start to do that. All right, tacking. We're tacking. We're tacking, Nicole. We're tacking. Nicole, we're tacking. Nicole, tacking. Not a whole lot to do on tacking like this. I just don't want to go into this blue that's right behind us. It would be no bueno. 
Are you ready? Attacking. <laughs> but we want our anchor just up in here. Honestly, like this is my favorite way of sailing. Like super slow in between like really cool areas where you're picking your house. That's what it is. When you're on a boat and you're about to anchor, you're picking where your house is going to be. How cool is that? Like how insanely cool is that? We are not moving right now. I don't know how. We're at 11 feet of water. There we go. I feel like we're moving a little. One seven. We're racing. We're racing along at 1.7 knots. We were doing a 0.6 and uh, now it just feels like we're, we've got such a speed. Look at the boat, the boat's healing over. Oh my God, two knots, no way! Two knots! You know what, I think we're at equal distance. We're gonna, we're gonna do the anchor. You ready? Blow the main. Now, I run up. This chain is so damn rusty. that again we pretty much got it but I like to be sure like super sure So unfortunately it drags, so we gotta restart this thing. Which means I gotta pull it all up. I don't wanna put gloves on this time because I did not realize how bad my chain was. All right, uh, pull attack. Windlasses and why a lot of things, but why not? You know, in a second you're gonna pull a tack and tack it. Get ready to uh, pull in the main sheet. Quit pulling in, in a whole bunch. Just, just pull, pull, pull. All right, now let go of it. Let it, let it flow. Come over here. Undo the blue halyard right here. You're gonna have to karate chop it once it's up. Karate chop, karate chop. There you go. And now we're gonna let this main down. Hold it, hold on to it. All right, let it down. Yep. And that's it. See, that wasn't so hard. I 
just hope to God my anchor holds now. Should flake this bad boy a little bit better. I think it's actually all in. Let's see if we can zip it. High five. Whew. Look at that. It's just like a ball. I might have to try to see if I can get a quarter inch chain here. What do you think? I think somebody here would have it. Yeah. Well, we learned a lot today. Yeah. We learned um, mostly that my anchor chain is like horrible. Absolutely horrible. What's funny too is if I had been sailing and using it, it would not have been this bad. Not even close. Because I, I end over ended this thing. And uh, you can see like the last bit that's good, but the, bat, uh, the pieces that were in there are just horrible. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to pay all of this out and clean all of it and do something with it later. But for now, let's uh, let's get some lunch. Whew. I am a little sweaty and messy after that sail onto the anchor. We're at a good spot. We're kind of out here in the middle of this anchorable spot. Right now we're, we're looking pretty good. We're in 14 feet of water. Kind of monitoring where we are here. I'm gonna mark it on my phone. As far as the shakedown sail goes, I would call this a huge success. The sailing was fast when we got out here, like the wind was already like on, on. You got a proper shakedown today. Oh, I got a proper shakedown, including anchoring. And this will be my first time out on anchor in like six months. Yeah. Or break your anchor chain at this rate. Hey, hey, let's be hopeful here. <laughs> yeah, I need to get a new anchor chain though, that's for sure. You know what? It was a good shakedown sale. I better stop talking so I can get some of this food. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. I hope you feel inspired to begin adventures of your own. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. For an exclusive in-depth look at this adventure lifestyle and to further support my channel, become a member of my Patreon crew. Link in the description. I'll see you on the next adventure.